This lecture is about the torque equations of an induction motor. So let's look into the different torque equations of an induction motor. It was seen in case of a DC motor that torque was proportional to flux acting on armature conductor and the armature current flowing through the conductor. In case of an induction motor torque phase per phase is a power the power factor will also have to be considered. Power factor for any AC machine is the angle of course between the impedance and the resistance whose value depend on resistance and impedance of the circuit. So it was seen in case of DC motor that the torque was directly proportional to flux and armature conductor and we will see that the torque will also be proportional to the flux and the armature conductor in current or the armature current or the rotor current in case of induction machines but there will be one more additional factor that will be the flux or that will be the power factor of the AC machine or the induction motor. The torque equation for deriving we will have to look into some parameters where E2 is considered as the rotor EMF per phase, R2 is the rotor resistance and X2 is the rotor reactance per phase. In DC machines there was no reactance while in induction machine there is self inductance and self inductance cause reactance. So and if R is the resistance and X is the reactance then the impedance of the per phase will be square root of R square plus X square that's for rotor and the rotor current will be the rotor EMF induced upon the rotor impedance which is equal to E2 upon under root R, R2 square plus X2 square and if you see the impedance triangle for the rotor you can see that there's a R2 and X2 and there's Z2 and the angle between Z and R that is the impedance and the reactance of the circuit will give the cos phi 2 which is R2 by Z2 and this angle is known as the power factor of the induction motor and the power factor applies for any AC machine And while considering the torque, the power factor will also have to be considered for induction machine. So it is seen that the torque is directly proportional to the flux and it is proportional to the rotor current or the armature current that is I2 here. And it is proportional to the rotor power factor which is cos phi 2. Phi 2 is the angle between rotor EMF and current. So again the angle between the EMF induced in rotor and the current flowing through the rotor conductor that angle can also be is also same as the power factor and the power factor can be derived in another way as the angle between the rotor EMF and the current. Again looking at the starting torque of the induction machine it can be written as K1 E2 I2 cos phi 2 and it is seen that the value of K1 can is found out to be 2 pi divided by n 3 divided by 2 pi n s so it is seen that the starting torque is directly proportional to the rotor resistance so as seen in the case of slip ring induction motor as the rotor resistance was increased during the time of starting the starting torque will increase so again squirrel cage induction motor are seen to have low starting torque as the rotor resistance is low in wound, rot, wound motor induction motor or the slip ring induction motor it is possible to increase the rotor resistance and hence the torque at the starting can be increased. So that is one of the difference and for the wound rotor and the squirrel cage and also it finds application difference. So that was the starting torque and at the time of running at the time of starting if the slip was S1 was one now the slip will be less than one because now the mo ro motor will rotate and there will be some speed this will have an effect on the frequency emf current and impedance and the power factor which will change the torque under the running state so as the motor will rotate the speed of the motor will co come into picture and the slip which is a synchronous speed minus the rotor speed divided by the synchronous speed into 100 it will be have an effect on the impedance and the frequencies of the rotor circuit. 
Again, the condition for the maximum starting torque is that the rotor resistance is equal to the rotor impedance. When this is achieved, the starting torque will be maximum for any induction machine. We have seen that the induction motor current can be written as the EMF of the rotor divided by the impedance of the rotor and under the running state the EMF will become SE2 it will be reduced by a fraction of slip and the frequency will be reduced by a margin of SF so the impedance or the reactance of the circuit the reactance will also be reduced by a margin of slip and also the power factor will have a reduction according to the slip so under the running condition the equation of the torque will become something like this it will become s e to r2 divided by r square root of r square plus s x2 that is a rotor reactant square into r r square plus s x2 that is a rotor reactant square again it will the square root will go here as it will cancel out and the torque is seen as KSE e2 that is a rotor induced EMF into rotor resistance divided by rotor resistance square plus slip times rotor reactance square. So that is how or uh, this is the final torque equation of the motor under running condition or this and starting condition while what will happen is that while the motor is running or it is starting the slip will be 1. So if you put 1 in this equation it will become the equation of the torque equation of the motor at the time of starting. Again while the motor is running the condition for maximum torque production is the rotor re resistance is equal to slip times the rotor reactance. So when this condition is met the maximum torque is produced and this torque is also known as pull out torque and the motor beyond this torque the motor will lose its control. In the next lecture we will see power equation of induction motor. That's all. If you like this video please do subscribe, like and comment.